Hey dogs. How's everybody doing? Pumpkin, you're here too? I am the kitten. Oh wow, everybody showed up. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Can't see out this window. I might need to adjust this palm tree. You get the picture. You know what's going on out here. It's time to go get some plants. Had the patio resurfaced last week. Started to move the furniture back out. Making some progress there. Not all that exciting. Didn't think that that was necessarily worth filming. Been out here cleaning the pool. The coating starting to get darker. This is just an update off of last video. It shouldn't take more than that. That's it. It's, it's still getting darker. I don't, it's so light. Every single bit of dirt from the dogs and from the trees and from the me shows out here. So that's not great, but it is getting darker. So just gonna give it some more time. While we're giving it more time, it's time to go get plants. The big greenhouse, they just opened up and it's best to get in there right at the start so you can stock up on all the goodies before they sell out need some sun patients probably gonna grab some tropicals maybe they'll have passion vines i would like to get a uh, cerulea they're usually the only place i ever see that sells them lots of places get assorted passion vines in and i need the name to know that it's going to be hardy here so hopefully they will have some of those maybe some hibiscus i don't know who knows the place is packed they got tons of plants let's go look at them finally some rain. That better not have screwed up the video monetization. Oh, it has been so dry. Like, my lips are chapped. Everything is chapped. Not everything. That didn't make any sense. I'm so excited. It's been a... I mean, it's not a long winter. You know what I mean. It's just it's springtime. It's going to be difficult to film in here without filming people, so there's going to be a lot of, like, awkward angles. I don't want to film other people. I don't think that's polite. Succulents. I need to look at those. right now there's so many plants and I got I have the noisiest cart that they there was only one cart left that's it's very loud look at the zebrina that is so nice I love a nice big zebrina lovely bananas I'll probably grab one of those looks like there's some mojito colocasias some super dwarf acuminitas black magic is that you black magic I think maybe Maui Gold, one of my favorite. They only have two left. That's tempting. And I see some black ruffles. Ooh, there's some Siam root. Should I go down there and actually look at the plants I'm talking about? You might appreciate that. There you go, Siam rubies. I'm just not crazy about them. I grew them when they first came out. It was before the plant craze had started. So they were never hard to get a hold of. And then the prices on them skyrocketed. And they're coming back down and being normal again, but I don't know, every time I grim, I'm just like, eh, it's just a burnt red kind of looking plant. I'd rather just grow a canna for that kind of effect. Oh, that's beautiful. Black diamond ruffles, what does that say on here? The tag says, that's teacup, oh, that's this one. That's teacup. This one is Royal Hawaiian Diamond Head. Very nice, really big, shiny leaves. I'm loving these orange hibiscus. Aren't they beautiful? I mean, part of that is just because there's so many of them. When you have them in mass like this, it's something that's hard to look away from. They're just so beautiful in these hanging baskets. Oh, I'm in trouble. Oh, I see a tag for the volcano. That's neat. Probably grab one of those volcanoes and eat hibiscus. I really, I can't decide on these. They're beautiful. But I don't like the red throat. If you knew here, something about me, I don't know what it is. I just, I don't like the red throat on a hibiscus. Maybe because it reminds me too much of a Rose of Sharon. And what's the point of that? That's already a hearty plant. But this orange is so vibrant. This one has a lot of new growth peeking out of the top on it. They're very nice, 
straight trunk. A little bit of a bend at the bottom. That's okay. Oh, and I'm seeing the candy. Those look like red candy sun patients. So my favorite. Tried those last year and I really liked them. Hopefully they'll have those in smaller containers. There's a volcano. See the volcano? Isn't that a nice flower? Multi-tone, yellow and red. So nice. These yellows are really pretty too. Uh-oh, don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I really like the yellow ones too. Okay, everyone has their back turned. I won't have to bore them out. Look at all this, there's so much. So many plants, so many rows of plants. Oh. Wave petunia baskets are looking nice. And look at the, those quarter lens surfaces are so tiny. Those do not need to be in a three gallon container. Oh, that's really, that's pathetic. Way too small for those containers, crazy. Okay, this aisle is always very impressive to look at. I'll hold still, because the cart's so noisy. Look at all the topiaries that they do. They're not topiaries, you know, it's a wire frame with a basket in it with the impatience planted on top and the bottom, and it just, oh, it looks so fun. Doesn't it look great? It's so fun seeing just like the masses and masses of flowers. It's breathing life back into my soul after a long winter of just brown and drab and dead. St. Louis is so ugly during the winter. Love my city, but oh my gosh, so ugly during the winter. Those are cool. I love the lantana trees, but every year I get one and they do really well until like August and then the sun goes off the patio and they don't end up looking great anymore, but the prices, it's so good. Like, look at how big and full these are. They're great plants, just, I just, I, do I need, I think I need to resist temptation this year. Oh, maybe I don't. That was, I don't think I have to. I don't, I don't owe anybody anything. I could just try, maybe just one. <laughs> That's what I do every year. I go, oh, I'll just get one and then regret it. Like two and a half months into summer because there's not enough sun for them anymore. Well, look at all the, they're so beautiful. It's just so hard to resist. I love the color combination of the ones that have the yellow that fade into the orange and go into the pink that have the orange center on them. And look at this one. It's like mostly pink. Okay, it's apparently very fragile. I barely touched it. Wonder what variety this is. Do any of them say? No, there's no labels on the pots. I wish it said which types they were. Okay, I've decided to get one. I just, I'm trying to find one that has a nice straight lead on it and that doesn't seem to be a thing for most of these ones that have the multicolor with the pink on them. Oh, this one's pretty straight. That's pretty good. One more kind of kinky. This is good. Because the thinking is that I can just overwinter it and then I won't regret it. I won't feel as bad about it. These are so easy to overwinter. You just stick them in a cool, dark, dry place. Basically let them go dormant and they'll come right back for you in the springtime. Oh, look at all these geraniums. It smells so... I was gonna say good. I don't want to smell good. It smells like geranium. -y. You know that geranium funk, the classic geranium smell. Electric orange sun patients. Not always easy to find. It's pretty much the only place I ever see them for sale. Sometimes I see them at Ace, which is interesting. Otherwise, only the tropical rose, which is basically this, but pink. Hopefully they have some of those in smaller pots too. Oh, look at all the little braided hibiscus. So the reason I decided that I don't like the, I didn't get a yellow, no yellow hibiscus, is because there's a variety, which is whatever this is, where instead of a red throat, it's this more of a pinkish red. And I do like that. Don't know why, I know, ridiculous, but that it's just, that's just me. For some reason I prefer this over that. I don't like these little standards though. I don't know what I would do with that, but hopefully at some point at some nursery I'll be able to find one that has that yellow on it. Although actually, I think, I, did I overwinter one of those in the grow space? This I might have one of those in the garage. If I do, it's probably not looking too hot since I can't even remember. It's a hibiscus bougainvillea. If I had lantana, those are all plants that go off into more of a darker area that I just don't see as often in the garage because, well, they're tucked away. That's a great color, compact coral pink sun patient. I love that, that's beautiful. I think that I've tried that before and it ended up just, I don't know, I didn't like it. When, oh, oh, okay, <laughs> I forgot to zoom out. There's just something about it when it got bigger, I wasn't crazy about it. Oh, these Terrenias. That's a nice, full, beautiful Terrenia. This is, it's the time of year, you know, here we are, it's just 
almost mid-April, because it will be by the time the video comes out. Don't usually see them looking quite this nice this time of year. Summer wave bouquet gold. Beautiful. Sweet potato vines, trailers, anyone? I think they've got plenty of them. Oh, the Bidens look nice. I don't know what I would do with those. I have a variety of plants that I already know that I need to grab while I'm here, so I need to stick with those and I can worry about creative things later. Here's those, the Tyrrhenias in a smaller pot. It's tempting, but again, I need to stick with what I know I need. They smell really good. White stream. You know, I always hold out for the snow princess, but I couldn't find them last year. All I could find was the white knight, which I'm not really as into. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to find those snow princess again this year because they get so big and so fall. Oh, those verbena look nice. There we go. Now we're talking. Time to pick out the sun patients. Okay. That's good. I was hoping they'd have the candies. This is the first time they've sold them here. I had to get them from Home Depot last year and it was just kind of like a good luck. Maybe you can find them kind of thing. They have the electric orange in the larger pots. Usually they have them in the small pots. I'd like to grab a couple of them in these bigger ones, I think. Yeah, may as well. Just because they're not always the easiest ones to come across, so may as well grab a couple of them. I don't know why I grabbed that one, it just it was speaking to me. Okay, here's a better example. This is the Compact Hot Coral. I was talking about those just a moment ago and how I like them when they were kind of like this. The problem is I get them more like this. It's more of an orange, and I like orange, but I would like my orange to just be orange. You know what I mean? These look really nice, but they changed colors for me during the summer, so I'm going to try and remember that and not grab a bunch of those. Just the Compact Hot Pink. Those are nice. I hope they have some of those. Huh, they don't. They only have the Compact Hot Coral Pink. That's too bad. The compact pink is just, it's just great. But that's okay. Doing okay here. Have plenty of these. I already have, I, by the way, full disclosure, already loaded up a cart with sun impatience. You'll be seeing a lot more than this at the end of the video. And they don't have electric orange either. I usually mix like, pink and orange, but uh, they don't have them. They have them in the bags right here. You can see the nice difference here. I'm going with the hot coral orange. I think that's what these were called. Where's you? Any of you have a tag? I hope so. Where's your tag? Compact hot coral. So instead of the hot coral pink, it's just hot coral. It's the, I don't know, it's the closest thing I guess I'm gonna be able to get to orange. And that's all right. I'm okay with that. I don't hate them. They're really nice looking, but I would prefer just orange. Orange would be nice. Should I get a giant basket of petunias? I think that might be fun. I think that these are all wave petunias. Maybe do like one of each color. That would be nice. It'd just be like a flush of color. I mean, look at how big this is. This thing's a monster. Yeah, I think that's a good choice. I never have enough purple in the yard. I'll probably grab some of these pinks too, or whatever you... That's pink, right? I think it's pink. Okay, and I would like a... Oh, right here. That was good timing. I'd like a big basket of the Tropical Rose Sun Patients. Aren't these beautiful? I love them so much. They're so big. That is a beast of a basket. Nice size plant. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I do really like the hot coral. Is that what these are? It's definitely not the orange. Is there a tag in here somewhere? I'm using you. Can you see? Anybody see a tag? I don't see one. They look like these. Maybe there's a tag on these over here. The hot corals? Yes. Compact hot coral. Okay. Yeah, all right. That'll work. I can see a resemblance. Looks nice. Almost kind of blinding. The rose glows look great too. Aren't those beautiful? I know I tried them last year and I wasn't crazy about them. They didn't look good in my yard, but here in the greenhouse with the overcast and the plastic film up there, they looked absolutely stunning. Practically luminous, gorgeous flowers. Oh, you know what? Same price, 26, 26. I'm gonna go with the dish. Look at just, that's freaking huge. Look at how full that is. Seems like a better deal. I don't need a hanging basket. I'm not gonna hang it up anyways. This is fine. It's actually probably gonna be easier to water this way. If you're looking to get an early start on veggies, this is the place to go. Look at the size of these things. Look at those tomatoes. I think they're 25 bucks. Look at that. That's huge. What type? Vegetable planter. What kind of tomato are you? Assuming some kind of cherry or grape. Husky cherry red. Buy one of those, definitely not gonna be short on cherry tomatoes, that's for sure. And they have the regular. Husky reds too. That's nice. It's too early though. You know, I don't I don't want to put these in the grow space. And I don't want them outside yet because it's just not warm enough, so 
That might be something I just have to keep my fingers crossed and hope they still have them in May. They're only open for a couple months, so you just kind of got to get what you get. So I try and get in here early. I love the trailing tomatoes. Have you all ever tried these cherry cascades? They're really fun. I'm tempted to go ahead and get one, but no, don't do it. I'm not going to do it. Never mind. Oh, -ho! coleus. They've got a lot of coleus. Wow. So much color. The geraniums. The geraniums are really tempting too. But yeah, they just never do well. They always end up rotting away. It gets too hot and humid. And then I don't have enough sun for them and they just blech, they go downhill. Do I need no coleus? I do not need coleus. Okay, we got some perennials. Clematis. I think I maybe see some peonies down here. Oh, so nice and fresh. Everything looks so good. You know, because it's early, so they haven't had a chance to start looking bad yet. That's not a clematis, that's a passion vine. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Perfect. That's what I wanted. Nice looking legularias. Very fun, very pretty. Look at the size of these game changer hydrangeas. You know, I planted a ton of these last year. They were like 20 bucks a pot and they were in tiny little pots because they were a new plant. And I don't think they survived the winter. I think that cold, that random snap we had in January did them in because I'm not seeing anything out of them yet. Should I grab a couple? Some of them are a little chlorotic, but it looks like there's some down here that look pretty good. Oh, you said tranthus. Look at them, this is nice. What kind is it? It's just red valerian citranthus. I bet the butterflies and hummingbirds would love those. Okay, I think <laughs> I've done enough damage. I had to go back and get another cart, go back to the house and have a look at everything. It's tempting to get vegetables, but I think it's too soon. Home! I don't, this is, it might take a while to go through all these plants. Is that, I, there's, are there maybe too much? Not too much, it's a lot. Kinda like Turbo's new squeaky toy. That's a lot too, here you go, go get it. Did you, what, what, go, retrieve, be a retriever, there you go. Yeah, go get it, get your toy. Good boy. Okay, hopefully that bought us a few minutes of not having squeakers going. Are you ready to see some fun stuff? Got a lot of color over here. Okay, we done. Feeling a little bit more calm. Did about a good 15 laps in the pool. I think we're going to chill for a minute. We'll film a video, talk about the new plants. Okay, I don't. where do I go from here? I have uh, not just plants from where we just were, but also from two other, I think two other nurseries? I can't even remember. I'm going to start with everything from where... It just was at Wythop because that's what I already filmed. We'll go just left to right. I picked up a couple of these Roeos. These were only 10 bucks. Look at how freaking huge these are. Great plants. I used these in some planters around the pool last year and for 10 bucks I was like, well, let's go ahead and grab a couple more. They're not the exact variety that I prefer, but maybe I'll end up putting them in a basket. Who knows if I decide I don't want to use them in the planters around the pool. I just really like the Roeos and for 10 bucks. I mean, come on, look at these. These are beasts. They're monsters. Also grabbed, put together, I should say, a flat or 12 pack of dragon wing begonias. And oh, this it, it rained last night very, very, very heavily. And these were pretty stretched out. So they're looking kind of weepy and sad. I think that I might need to set these up in some kind of way to help support them or just uh, give them a good old cutback, about 50%. I went half red, half pink. There's not a dramatic difference between the flowers on a pink dragon wing begonia versus a red dragon wing begonia. I tend to think that the reds just look like a slightly more saturated pink, which I get, well, that's the definition of pink, isn't it? I couldn't make up my mind, so I got both. Six of each, gonna have lots of fun planting those up. I love a dragon wing begonia. In the last few years, I haven't really had much luck finding the red dragon wing that weren't the bronze form. There are various types of dragon wing begonias, and I think it's ones that are called like grande or monster, something like that, that they have a more bronzish type of foliage on them. And I'm just not as into those. I really like the green, just plain old green, regular dragon wing begonia. It's gonna help do some cutbacks for me, Turbo. Thank you. I just grabbed six of the compact hot pink impatience, sun patience. 
talked about these while I was in there that I usually use these in the landscape, buy them in the big gallon size containers and mix them with the electric orange, but uh, they didn't have them. These or the electric orange in the gallon size container. So that's when I got six of them and figured that I will probably end up using these in the hydrangea planters around the pool, three in each. Hopefully I can find some orange to mix in with them. If not, that's okay. Glad to have them. I like the flowers on the compact hot pink. Look at that. Just a classic bubblegum pink impatient. You can't go wrong with that. And then there are some hibiscus over here. One of these is from Sherwoods. The rest of these are, I'll explain that later. Grabbed one of those volcanoes that I talked about while I was there. Really fun, beautiful hibiscus. It's morning, so this is still opening up, but you can get an idea of what those flowers look like. It's a really fun flower on a hibiscus. And then I also grabbed one of these first ladies, one of the Hollywood hibiscus. Typically I pick these things up from like Home Depot or Lowe's. They sell them there every year, but they don't usually have the ones that I like. Last year they had some that were labeled first lady, but they had really big yellow and brown flowers on them. So they were, I don't know, they were mislabeled. Can I help you, Turbo? <laughs> Did I get on your level? I'm in his world right now. It doesn't have any flowers on it. It did when I brought it home. It did what hibiscus do and dropped those flowers because it's the next day. But it's just a really nice saturated pink flower, similar to the seminal pink, but it's a deeper pink. And the flowers are smaller. These are more of a compact, bushy plant than you get with the older variety like the seminal, which is going to be a taller, potentially more stretched out type of hibiscus. This one over here is from a different nursery, and so I get, I'll talk about that one later. Assuming I won't forget. Okay, and then the sun, look at, there's so much color. The sun patience, that's what I was getting ready to say. That's, wow. Doesn't that just look beautiful? So much color, I can't wait to get these planted up. I have two flats here of the red candy. The candy impatience are ones that I started trying last year when they first came out or first became more available. I didn't been able to find them prior to that. And it's just a sun patient, just, you know, regular sun patient, but with a multi-tone flower, kind of like you would normally see with a New Guinea patient, which these are, you know, the New Guinea, it's the New Guinea, right? More colorful flowers. So the red candy, you have this pale pink that fades to a red in the center of the flower. And then the purple candy, which are back here are, well, it's purple. <laughs> What else do I say? They're the same, but different. Red, purple. I, To me, I see pink and pinkish purple, but that's what they're labeled as. And I don't see color the way a lot of people do, so I'm not the best judge of character on that. The only thing I'll say about the purple, at least the ones I tried last year, is they were not as floriferous. Their flowers just were not as abundant as on the red. And you can kind of see that just if I stand back here. Red candy, red candy. And then the purples, you're seeing a lot more green in here. I believe that the purple candy does have a new type this year. It's called purple candy improved or something like that. Candy purple improved. And I assume that has to do with the flowering, but maybe they had bad growth habit. I don't know. Ones I tried were great. They didn't get a ton of sun. Not as much as I would like for a sun patient to get. Sun patients can go on the lower end for sun as far as them being full sun, right? They can go shade to sun more sun they get, the better the flowers are going to be. These were underneath the hydrangea trees that I keep around the pool. So they got a good amount of shade in the afternoon. So maybe that's why they weren't as abundant. I don't know. Going to try them both. And then the orange. Talked about this as a nursery, I believe. Couldn't find just the regular orange in the gallon size pots. I like the gallon size pots because these are the ones I put into the landscape. And you just get more bang for your buck, more instant gratification. I went with the hot coral. Compact hot coral. Pretty sure went over that a lot at the nursery. This was yesterday for me. It's orange enough. On camera, that looks pretty orange, but it's coral. Here's an orange flower. There's orange. That's orange. Hot coral. So see, not the same thing, but I'm cool if that just can be trying something different in the landscape this year. Gonna be mixing things up with the color combo palette, and that should be fun. I'm not positive. If I'm going to go with the uh, hot coral blended in with the candy red, red candy, or if I'm going to go for the purple, I'm not sure. I may end up actually just using them all. I think that could look pretty cool, but I wasn't sure which ones I wanted to use for what. So that's why I got two flats of the red candy and two flats of the purple candy, because I'm going to use them all. I wanted these for various spots in the garden, but which ones I wanted to alternate with the orange that I'm not so sure of. I actually think the orange looks better with the uh, purple candy, but the purple candy is not as floriferous, so I will probably mix up with the red. And the more I look at it, I actually 
through the camera lens. I think I like it better with the red candy. See, here we go. This is, just wait, just give it a couple weeks. When it's time to put these in the ground, I'm gonna be a nightmare. You're not gonna be able to stand me. Get it figured out. I think I already figured it out. I'm probably gonna go red candy with the orange because the purple, even though I think that that goes better with the orange, not as abundant, but it's also early in the season. Maybe some more heat comes out, they'll be more abundant. These right here are the, <laughs> are they the vigorous? I'm pretty sure they're the vigorous. Where's your tag? Do you not, no tag, huh? Come on, it's one of my favorites. Some patients, Vigorous Tropical Orange. Not always the easiest to find. That nursery's the only place I can find that sells them. When you see Vigorous on a some patient tag, that just means that they're bigger. You have the Compact, like the Compact Candies. We talked about those over there. The Vigorous, which used to be called Landscape. Those are just, well, if they're more vigorous, they get bigger. With these, you expect 18 to 34 inches high and 24 to 36 inches wide. And on the Compacts, 14 to 28 inches high and 14 to 24 inches wide. So it's just, it's what it says, Compact small but still very large vigorous huge i wish that the vigorous ones were sold more abundantly they used to be maybe people just said they were too big and the compacts would be more popular and that's why everything is sold as a compact now i don't know the vigorous tropical orange one of my favorites tropical orange and the tropical rose which is this but pink i think y'all saw those and you'll see the one that i got here in a minute just a really fun tropical looking Impatient. They're all tropical looking in my opinion. So grab two of those in the gallon size containers. I only got two of those. That's because I probably won't want them all over the place. I'm generally very specific about where I like to plant those. And also I got some of these. Do you look at, come on now. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. Doesn't that look beautiful? I know. Need to paint here. I'm on it. I have somebody who's going to be working on that fairly soon. These is the same thing the tropical orange they're in bags so i have three of these <laughs> this this is three that's two this is three i only have two of them over here other ones on a white post behind me pardon that little rust spot i got some pink stuff that i can use to scrub that out here at some point when i get around to doing it i had talked about when i had the patio refinished which would have been i think the video prior to this one or this vlog prior to this one about maybe putting a trellis up on this wall and then I decided, hey, let's try the wall bags and just see what the sun's even like over here. Because in a, I don't know, I was going to say a month, in like six weeks or so, there's going to be two very large queen palms over here that do shade things quite a bit. And as I mentioned, the sun impatients, they can go shade to sun, more flowers in the sun though. So I figured, let's try wall bags. So far, they're holding up okay. It's only been a day, so it's hard to say. The hooks that I'm using, the siding clips, are rated up to 25 pounds, which I think will be all right. I wanted to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want to do eight of them, but that wasn't an option. They didn't have all those. I considered just making them myself because these are very easy to put together. You can buy the bags online. These are the ones that have 10 holes in them. Some of them have five, and you just you pop the plants and you fill soil, and that's basically it. They're a pain in the butt to water, so that's something to keep in mind, but I will be putting these up on drip. That will make a world of difference. This one right here is a compact pink, compact hot pink, like the little ones that I got in the six pack. I wish they had had more of these. This is the only one they had in the compact hot pink, so it will be going elsewhere. I'm not gonna leave it right here. I don't wanna go back in. Come on, come on. Okay, that's good enough. It's pink. I'll be able to tell what it is. It's a pink sun impatient. As I was saying, instead of doing eight to fill up this entire wall, I think I'm just gonna put the one right here, I'm just gonna raise this up to probably right there and then move this one up over there. So there'll be one on each side of this window. See how those do. And then next year can just go crazy with them and put them all over the place. That is if I end up liking how they look, who really knows? Gotta give that some time, won't know until the end of the season. Isn't that gonna look awesome though? And I'm sure I'll be going back. So if they end up having another one of these, then maybe I'll get another one and then have one on each side of each like. So then I'll have fours. Right now I have three, if I had one more, then I could really fill in that area up there with those sun impatience. And I think that would look pretty cool. Although there are other spots where I wanted them on the light poles out here too. So that's something else to think about. Like I said, you can make them yourself. It's not very complicated, but price wise, it was cheaper to buy them if done with sun impatience, that is, than to do it myself. Sun impatience, you can't just get them in six packs for like five bucks, like you can a regular impatient or some other annuals. These are generally like 10 to 12 bucks for a six pack somewhere in there. So it was cheaper to do it this way, but I do think it'd be fun to make some of my own or maybe make some that just have like sweet potato vines or something else in them to even it out. But that could be fun. I don't know, just thinking out loud here. Could be an option, might be fun to do. So much fun, so much color. Okay, what's next? Let's finish off the impatience. Tropical Rose, Sun Patience, similar to the orange, but you know, more of a 
rosy color. I have found the tropical rose to be more vigorous, floriferous. It flowers much more heavily than the orange does, which didn't used to be the case. So maybe that's something that's been improved upon over the years. Y'all saw me at the nursery debating whether or not to get the one in the basket versus the one that's just in these shallow containers this shallow container here. I went ahead and got the one in the shallow container, one, because it's much bigger, and two, because it just makes more sense. I don't need it in a basket. It, that's not necessary. This will be easier to transplant and starting off with a larger plant. Pretty good price on this, too, considering how big it is, and there are four of them in here. There are some of my favorites. I always like to have one really big, round, full tropical rose. Some patients somewhere in the garden. I usually plant them underneath my Robolini palm. Maybe I'll do the same this year. I don't know. Time will tell. We'll find out. And then I also got one of these. Isn't it beautiful? I mean, it was more beautiful before it got stormed on last night. This is a compact coral pink. Got the compact corals. Showed this to you before. I wanted to get one of these compact coral pinks because while I was there at the nursery, I talked about how they just look different when you get them home versus the way they look under the greenhouse film. And I knew that I would want one regardless of the fact that I know that it's going to look different when I get it home. So I just got one of these big planters of them instead of getting a bunch of little ones that I have to figure out where to put them. I was like, this could be fun. Just have it in a container and I can tuck it wherever I want to and enjoy it that way as opposed to having it underplanted around something else. The flowers on these, something I do like a lot about them is that they have a shimmer. And I don't know, I'm gonna zoom way in here, get really, really close, wait for it to focus. There is a lot of shimmer in those flowers and again i don't know if you'll be able to see it but i hope that you can because it's beautiful it's a nice sparkle one of my favorite sun patients is the compact rose glow i didn't see them this year which is okay i think i'm good on sun patients i don't really need any more there are enough of them over here the petunias i went ahead and grabbed three of these these are all wave petunias don't know the types on them i just went with one of these ones that's a lighter pink like this one. Look at how big that is. It's freaking huge. It's a beast. Purple right here, which I think you guys saw while I was at the nursery. It's very nice, very large flowers on them. Again, we had storms last night, so it's harder to really see how pretty they are, but it's a lighter purple with the darker purple in the middle, heavily veined. I always love a purple one. I almost said impatient. Talk about impatience too much. Petunia, that's what these are. And then I got one of these deeper pinks right here. So I have one of each of those colors they smell really nice that is one of the reasons i picked them up with the a lot of the super hybridized and over i don't want to say overbred we'll call them the perfected petunias mainly like the vista series and some of the waves you just don't have the fragrance of the petunias that we had in the past with the ones that you know where you just got a few strings of growth and you had to deadhead them and keep them pruned back for them to stay looking nice but they smelled so good in the morning and in the evening these it's not as potent but i did notice last night when i was out here before it started raining there was still a very sweet aroma in the air that was coming from the petunias i was mostly noticing it off of the purple which is normal typically a purple petunia is where you get a lot of the fragrance i'm glad i got those there's a little bit of sweet smell coming out of each one i did grab one of the lantana trees you said i don't we need to talk about it i don't think so i regret it if i don't remember to keep it pruned back and to put it in a container that i can easily move when the sun moves off of where i'm keeping them may even end up in the driveway because there's plenty of sun there and i think they would do really well there they're just so pretty and the bees and butterflies and hummingbirds love them i just I always like to have one out here this one also i did manage to find with a nice strong lead on it. In years past, they always have some kind of huge kink in them because I forget to focus on that main growth at the bottom as opposed to just focusing on all the bushiness and buds on top. That's really not necessary. They're so vigorous that if it's not that full on top, it's okay. It will be eventually. It's more important that it has a nice strong lead on it for it to become a plant that I'm going to want to overwinter and take care of and have for years to come. I kept getting ones that had like a weird kink in them or a big zigzag something of that sort and those aren't ever standards that i feel the need to keep them cut back and thicken them out and bother keeping them going this one looks nice so i'm glad to have that one and hopefully we'll be keeping it around for a long time because it is a very very pretty lantana don't know the type it's just you know one of the common orange pink and yellows it's fun to have around it smells horrible though some people like the smell not me 
that car ride home, I got kind of nauseous just from the smell of this one plant. I'm not a fan of the smell of the lantanas. I think they stink. Grabbed one of those elephant ears that we talked about. I can't get to the tag. It's way down in there. I've buried it from myself. This was, I keep wanting to call it diamond head, and I think that might be what it is, but I think it's diamond ripple, perhaps? That might be what it's called. Oh, it's just diamond head. For some reason, I thought it had the word ripple in it. I'm probably thinking of one of the other colocasias. has some pollen on it, but it's a nice big shiny black leaf. The sapphires are some of my favorites. Black coral, one of my favorites. This is similar-ish. I don't think it's quite as nice, but they are much larger much 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 larger actually than the black coral and the sapphires also grabbed one of these abrina bananas probably should have gotten two but i went ahead and just got one one of my favorites it's just the baby got plenty of grown left to do not much else to say about it because it's still so little so grows abrinas are great love the foliage on a zabrina uh, blood leaf if you don't know what i'm talking about there it is zabrina it's not a rojo it's just zabrina excellent banana trees also i don't really know why i got this it was just this was a last minute impulse my brain was scrambled the time i was leaving so itsy pink petunia it's just it's just a tiny petunia i don't I, I didn't need this i thought the flowers on the tag looked really cool hopefully these will deepen up now that they're getting some natural sunlight i think it only goes about 12 inches wide something along that do i have to i'm gonna have to pull the tag out to tell you Six to 12 inches wide, 12 to 20 inches wide. So that's still a decent sized petunia. But it's just, it's cute. The tiny little flowers on them. There are other smaller petunias that you can get. Calabrax being a good example of that. But if it's actually a petunia, then hopefully it's going to fare better when things get wet outside. That's what I'm hoping. I just thought it'd be something fun to try. Passion vine. It's one of the ceruleas right here. Your classic blue passion flower i did manage to find a table where they had a whole bunch of them got the biggest one i could find generally considered a zone seven and up oh it says zone six all right i was going to say zone six they usually do just fine if they have to die back to the ground you want to plant them against the wall some place where they're going to have some protection during the winter time this i would like to put over here along this wall i still need to get all this stuff picked up from the repaving stuff that was done out here I think it'd be fairly easy to cut a trellis to fit in here right along this wall paint it gray so it matches the siding just pop the passion vine down in there and let it come up here and do its thing i think it would do well there it's a spot that gets a good amount of winter protection bananas and hedichiums butterfly gingers do pretty well over there so this should do just fine and i love a passion flower the incense is one of my favorites for the fragrance but just the classic blue cerulea is next up there for me it's just i don't know maybe it's a nostalgia thing from my childhood there are lots of passion flowers to choose from that may pop if i can find some of those i'd like to plant this because that's a native to missouri so it would be good to have some of those around but for the time being in that more sheltered spot over there i think that this is the way to go it's that orange hibiscus i know i talked about how i wasn't sure about him y'all saw it in the cart so it's no surprise here Something I am happy to report on is that this flower was open on it yesterday and it looked kind of weathered. It's still open today, so this might be a two or three day holder on their flowers. I don't know what that meant. I didn't say it quite right, but you know what I mean. Maybe their flowers have some more longevity to them, seeing as how this is the second day I've had it and that flower's still open. It's just nice. Yeah, I'm not crazy about the red throat, but the orange on it is so vibrant that I just, I had to have it. It looks so good. I wish that they would start standardizing the just all orange hibiscus flowers. I never see that. I see them sometimes in the ones where you have three and they're braided and it's beautiful, but that's it. I never see it any other time. At least they don't ever send them up here. So this will have to do for now. It's a great flower. Lots and lots of buds on this one. So I'm thinking I'm going to be seeing a show from it sometime soon. Did I say what it's sunset orange? I said it, right? You know what it is, sunset orange hibiscus. That's what it is, this one right here. Fun looking flowers. And now that I have it home, I am really glad that I got it. Doesn't that look good there? It's not likely where I'll be keeping it, but it looks nice. I'm liking it. The red throat on it's not bothering me at all now that I have it here. Also grabbed an oleander just because I like their texture. I like the airiness on them. I think they're fun. I love the pink when you just get the classic pink. That's what it's called, Calypso pink. Your traditional, just run of the mill vibrant oleander i also have a austin pretty limits over here that's much smaller it has not been a very vigorous oleander for me so far whereas these these will i don't know about double their size in a year in a container but they'll put on about 50 percent of their size as long as you keep them pruned back they fire like crazy just look at me see how it's moving in the wind it's so fun 
again, that might be a me thing because I just associate them with the coast and being near the water, so it's something I want around. It's been a few years since I've done much with oleanders because of Turbo, because he's been a growing baby and had to teach him not to put plants in his mouth. And so far this year, I haven't seen him do it. So yeah, toxic, but absolutely beautiful. It looks great, doesn't it? I love an oleander. Hydrangeas. I have my morning, <laughs> this is the morning shade spot. I overestimate the amount of shade they'd be getting from this maple tree that's up there. These are the Game Changer Hydrangeas. I grabbed two of the pink. You can see right there, look at that. Fun flowers. I think the reason I like the Game Changer Hydrangeas is because they actually look a lot like an Impatient. I've wanted the Game Changer Hydrangeas for a few years. I grabbed a whole bunch from last year and planted them up along the hill over here. None of those look like they made it through the winter, so it was probably dumb of me to get some more but they're just so pretty that I thought I'd give them another try. Maybe I'll put them in a different spot, but I doubt it. I think I'm gonna stick them right back over in that corner and just amend the soil better. These are much larger than the ones that I planted too. The ones I planted last year were in one gallon containers and they're like 22 bucks a pop. These were $20 a piece and they're in three gallon containers and they're easily four to five times the size of the ones that I planted last year. Didn't have the same variety. Last year I planted the pink, the picote, 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 I don't know how you say it. That word right there. It's a white lace cap. Has a blush pink outline to it and a pink. It's, come on, look at that. Isn't that a beautiful flower? That's so happy and cheery. And I like the texture you get from a lace cap too. Great plants to have in the shade or filtered sun, really, I think as well, though we'll do better. The ones I had last year, I had the pink, the picote, that's what I was trying to talk about. Picotee, that's probably how you say it, and one that was blue. They didn't have those, so I just went ahead and got two pinks, two of the, I was call it white, and uh, I'm very happy with it. They are huge. The reason the Game Changer hydrangeas are supposed to be really great is because they're a macrophylla, you can tell from the larger leaves and the big lace caps on them, that will bloom earlier in the year than most other hydrangeas do. They go spring to frost, so they're supposed to be very abundant, kind of like an impatient, which is interesting because the flowers on them look a lot like the flower you would have on Impatient, but they're perennial. I think they only go like 24 to 30 inches, a nice rounded moundy habit to them. Hardy all the way to zone five, they're supposed to bloom on all the new growth, which is a very important thing for macrophyllas, right? Where I live, even though I'm technically zone seven, my macrophyllas almost always die down to the ground, so they need to bloom on new growth or else I'm not gonna get flowers on them. They look nice. I'm very happy with them. There are also a lot of other new plants over here that y'all haven't seen, so I will move on from everything from Weethop where I just filmed to the plants I picked up that I didn't film because it was raining and those nurseries were outdoors. This right here is an oak leaf acanthus. One of my favorites, they've been on my list of plants that I've wanted to put in the garden for a very long time. Just not something I ever see at the nurseries. They have a very long, large, glossy, thick, tropical looking leaf. I like these because they give me the vibe of a bipinatifidum, a thematophyllum, but it's perennial. They have these big sprays of flowers that they put up I would say early summer on them. These are hardy to zone six, I believe. The oak leaf is supposed to be somewhat vigorous. This should go, I think, three by three in just a couple of years. A very nice big mounted shape to the foliage on those. And and I shouldn't even be talking about them because chances are I'm going to do a video dedicated to them. It'll be out after this. They're just a great plant. This was part of an order I placed with the baby grand magnolia, which was a plant I talked about in the video right before this one, so it was a special order. I have some alpinias back here that were ordered because I never know if the nurseries are going to get them. I saw some at the nurseries, but they're like 45 to 50 bucks a piece, and they were maybe a third the size. I was able to order them for $30 for free shipping, so glad that I managed to grab those because that's a much better price. They're nice and big, and there's also a, another fan palm over there that I'll talk about that another time. It requires a good amount of conversation. I feel like I'm still forgetting some. Yeah, there are two more. Another hibiscus that, well, there's not really a point in showing it to you because it closes up its flowers. It's one of the trade wind hibiscus, but it's in a large pot. You know, the trade winds, they tend to be sold in small containers, generally gallon size and then even down to four inch pots. You see them a lot at the big box stores during the summertime. It's just like a couple sticks. And that's cool and everything, but it's always bugged me that you can't buy them 
as a nice bush because they're very, very, very pretty hibiscus. So I was happy to see that they had them in these larger containers. And of course, the one that I brought home is the only one that doesn't have a tag. I believe it's called Mandarin Breeze. It's a very saturated orange that is lighter on the outside and fades to darker in the middle. You'll be seeing plenty of the flowers on these as time goes on. I'm sure in the next video I'll try and remember to show you flowers on these because they should all have popped out something within the next week. At the very least, this one over here will have. And then the last of the plants that I picked up from Sherwoods when I was picking up my baby grand magnolia and acanthus, a diplodinia, and it's just labeled as tridinia. So it's three different diplodinias in a container. I'm not crazy about that. I've talked about it so many times before, like the triple colored hibiscus and all those things. If you like it, that's cool. Nothing wrong with that. It's just not for me. But I had to get this because one of the diplodinias that's in here is absolutely beautiful. Isn't that great? I don't know what kind it is because this is labeled as a tridenia <laughs> instead of actually knowing what they are. Reminds me sort of of the apricot mandevilla and uh, even more so than that it reminds me of the orange diamantina from Proven Winners which has not been the easiest plant to find. Nurseries don't usually carry them around here and they're not selling them on the line this year, at least not when I've looked online. So there are two diplodinias in here that are just pink and I don't care about them. And then there's just this one right here, this one right here. Isn't it beautiful? Look at that. That's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Look at those colors. I think that this is awesome. I would love to have these all over the garden. In fact, it wouldn't actually shock me if this is the orange diamantina because I'm seeing it's kind of on the struggle bus. Just that one. The other ones are fine. The diamantina, I grew it one time the year it came out. And it was an awesome plant, but it was more leggy and stretched out than just your regular diplodinias. So maybe that is what this is. I have no idea. I haven't spent any time trying to figure it out either. I just brought it home and said it was pretty and I've been enjoying looking at it. That's something I'll do some more research on another time and we can revisit it in the future. Talk about what type of diplodinia that is. All that matters to me is that it's beautiful. That is a stunning flower. I love those colors. Ah, there's so much color out here. It looks so good. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I don't think I. Oh, I grabbed a couple mints. Chocolate mint. They're in the house. You don't need. It's just they're just little two-inch containers with some mint in them. They smell so good. The chocolate mint is one of my favorite varieties of peppermint to grow. There, go see that. Look at that. Moving in the wind. Looking beautiful. I'm really glad I got the purple petunia too. I like the combination with the purples and the pinks. I'm, every year I talk about wanting to plant more purple petunias and then I never do it. Largely because I've been so stuck in the getting the Vista series petunias because I know that they grow well when the sun shifts in the backyard later in the summer and there's not as much of it. And that's the only reason I tend to go with those Vistas, the Proven Winter Vista petunias over the just regular wave petunias. I think wave petunias are awesome but they don't hold up as well for me when the sun shifts. But maybe that's changed. It's been a good five, six years since I've really given the wave petunias much of a try. So I, I'd like to plant some more of them this year to get the purple because I'm not, the Proven Winners, they don't really have a Vista that's purple that I really like. They have the Bordeaux, but I don't think that's a Vista. And again, it's a fragrance thing. These smell so good. Still not as strong as the old school petunias, but it's nice to have some of that sweet fragrance out here in the morning that you get with a petunia. I would also like to put some alyssum out here, talk about hopefully being able to find some of the snow princess. So that when you come outside, you have that clean, fresh, like a hint of jasmine in the air. I could also plant some jasmine. That might be an option. That would actually probably do well in the spot that I was thinking about for the passion flower. All right, we're getting off track here. Thanks for hanging out. I had a great time. Good to get all of this out of the way. Probably the most ever done in one video that I've ever done in one video. Doesn't this look nice? It's not gonna be staying like this, obviously, but for now, it's so much fun, it's so much color. And I'm loving these. I really hope I can find another one, but if not, like I said, I can get some of the bags myself, make something else to go with them. Lots of fun options. We're just getting started here. Now that the plants are here, can finally get moving on planting things up. Still have a little bit of cleanup to do in the garden recovering from having all the repaving and moving done out here. Be able to get to that next week, depending on the forecast. Hopefully sooner than later, I'd like to start plopping some stuff in the ground out the ground starting to warm up. I said it was going to grow. This has been a long video. Hope everybody had a good time. Hope you're doing well, having a great weekend or whenever you're watching this video. Comment down below and say hi. Which do you have a favorite variety? What do you think between the red candies and the purple candies when you combine them up with these hot corals? Like, I think they look good both ways. Again, my only apprehension with the candy purple is that 
they don't flower as heavily. So I think that this would probably be the way to go. But just color palette wise, I do feel like I like the way these look together more. I like them both though. So it doesn't really matter what I end up doing there. And I may end, I'll probably end up doing it all because I'm liking how this looks right now. So those are all things you can figure out later, but it's always fun to have people's input. Have you started up on your annuals yet? Nurseries, at least where I live here in St. Louis, they're really starting to load up over the next couple weeks. There are going to be plants absolutely everywhere. And I am so, so, so excited about it. Even though at this point, I don't really need much else. I'd like to handle <laughs> a lot of the plants before I move on to other planters that can be a tricky thing because i don't get a lot of my plants that i underplant until like mid to late may i have the huge palm trees go off to a greenhouse they get delivered back in mid to late may so i always end up having to hold on to a fair amount of plants for generally a month or so longer than i'd like to keep them in their small little nursery containers but just what you got to do because if i wait till the actual palm trees get here to underplant them usually after mother's day and that tends to be when the nurseries kind of drop their stock around here gotta get them while they got them i right, hope everybody's doing well having a great day a great life and everything's going absolutely beautifully for you and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye